Welcome to the 2022 ACS Jakarta IPTP Visual Arts Exhibition. I'm glad that our school can organize this exhibition successfully and at such a productive scale, even when we face challenges during this pandemic time. Normally, we will open our exhibition to all students and teachers on school campus, but the COVID-19 restrictions have made it impossible for mass gatherings. Still, we are able to have it, and I thank you for joining us virtually online. Despite the restrictions placed upon us this academic year, our five IBDP visual arts students have been prolific in their output. This could be seen in their creative works, which have taken much of their time and effort. The title of this exhibition that they have collectively decided is 2022. It is simple, straightforward, but deep in its meaning in conveying the year which they believe pandemic will end. This exhibition is a mixture of works that show a variety of styles and themes, and this is what a good exhibition is supposed to be. It showcases the work of our five grade 12 artists, Lydia, Dora, Hannah, Jimin, and Jacqueline. More importantly, I believe they want to demonstrate the joy they get from painting and sculpting. I wish that you too will be inspired by their passion and pick up the interest to be immersed in visual arts. There's nothing more satisfying in art than capturing a moment in time or an expression of feeling. And there is nothing more satisfying than doing it and sharing it with others. Our art is a way of expressing ourselves. I think there is a need in all of us to express ourselves in some way. And for some of us, it is through visual arts. Also, I want to thank Pak Andika, who has worked very hard to facilitate this exhibition, guiding and coaching the five IBDP students. I would also like to thank the admin staff who have helped in the logistics. It takes a team of committed individuals to make it happen. And I would say it is a success. Congratulations. So I officially announced the 2022 and ACS Jakarta IBDP Visual Arts Exhibition open. Thank you for your support and please enjoy studying and looking at the exhibits and be inspired. Overarching theme for my body of work revolves around my cultural identity. I realized that I was neglecting one of my cultures that was coming from my mother's side of the family, which is the Bata culture. Through this exhibition, I hope to embrace and learn more about my heritage by sharing my personal experience growing up in a multicultural surrounding to the audience, while also familiarizing others to the Bata culture. There is a strong influence of my Bata and Chinese culture on all of my works. Every work connects to another with one or more visual or conceptual commonalities that always related back to my roots. Most of them represent a slightly different flavor or aspects of my personal experience relating to my culture. I had arranged my work from left to right and divided it into four parts. Cultural origin, losing touch to culture, personal experience, and embracing culture. My exhibition begins with my family portrait titled Ike Culture. This piece introduces my Bata culture origin and the disconnection that I feel with the culture. Over time, the Bata heritage in my family becomes disrupted and forgotten once a different culture and race was introduced to my mother's side of the family. This piece allowed me to experience the satisfaction of destroying a perfect image. By burning the paper, it was adding a peculiar flair to the speech which made it seemingly more disturbing and intriguing. This piece also allowed me to challenge my skills of portraying age to drawing. The ulos is the traditional tendon fabric of the Batak people of North Sumatra in Indonesia, and the red, black, and white colored ulos is symbolizing my cultural heritage of being Bataknese. However, the burn marks and holes indicate the aging and decay of my identity as a traditional Bata girl. My next few pieces 
the dance for year at the Opera on the Rue Le Pelletier, which is an appropriation of Edgar Dacus painting, and passive, explores possible reasons as to why I had felt disconnected from my Bata culture. These two pieces not only applies to me, but it also brings forward an issue in a more global scale that the audience could associate with their own experience. As our world steadily progresses and the technology advancing exponentially, many minority cultures are left forgotten or neglected as people, especially youths nowadays, strive to continuously expose themselves to new environment and learn new subjects and skills. And the more we expose ourselves to new people, surroundings, ways of life, the less relevant the culture we're most familiar with may be. To physically translate this theme onto my work, I use digital mediums to create and plan these pieces. Both artwork reminds audience of the side effects of keep having to keep up with the progressive world and reminds us not to neglect any of our cultures and values. You're Just There, Racial Imposter Syndrome, and Happy as a Lark returns back to my experience growing up as a multicultural individual and portrays the challenges that I encountered, such as the feeling of unbelonging in either culture. These pieces are all self-portraits, each made with different mediums ranging from oil paint using palette knife, mixed media of oil and acrylic paint, to modeling clay. Through the variety of mediums, I was able to explore the different methods to channel my emotion. With the piece you're just there, painting using the palette knife was a great catharsis for releasing my pain and anger by transforming my emotions through the strokes of pain. Racial imposter syndrome and happy as a lark was a test of my technical skill in oil painting and sculpting. My last two pieces, Rumah Bolon and The Origin of Lake Toba, concludes my journey where I embrace my multicultural identity as a Batakese and Chinese individual. Throughout the course of IB visual art, my artworks prompted me to contemplate my personal growth and how a part of my identity can be expressed. Thus, I intend for this exhibition to do the same. It is a space where people can reflect and allows viewers to also embrace all sides of their cultural identity as I have done through my artworks. Hi everyone, my name is Dora Kalista. I'm taking IB Visual Art HL and today I'll be showcasing my exhibition. So my first artwork here is titled Decaying Culture where it um, showcases the solely disrupted Bata heritage in my family. I drew the ulos as a symbol of the traditional Batakmi's um, fabric and aside from that, I'm trying to showcase that my but the culture comes from my mom's side of the family where I drew my grandparents and slowly as it reaches to the um, right side um, the culture in my family gets disrupted as a new culture is introduced hence showing the ulos slowly um, getting loose as it reaches to me and I also uh, use the burning technique as a symbol to represent how there's this disconnection between uh, me and my Bata culture. So my second artwork is an appropriation artwork that I did digitally on the app Procreate. So this is an appropriation um, artwork by Edgar Degas, which is his works are commonly known for um, movements such as dances of ballerinas. So in here I'm trying to um, showcase the idea that there's this mix of culture nowadays where Western cultures such as the ballerinas are dominating the minority cultures and this is shown by the unequal ratio of the um, Batakmis dancers and the ballerinas. And here I do the traditional, a woman in the traditional Batak um, outfit um, doing the torture dance. So my third artwork is titled Passive where um, here I'm exploring how it, why is it that youth nowadays are disconnecting from their original cultures? And for me personally, I feel that youth nowadays are getting um, having a more progressive mindset, and that's why um, that is also the influence of technology shown by the um, students um, using their phones, and that's why they're kind of disconnected from their cultures and 
I'm also uh, here using a uniform uh, because I'm trying to show that uh, by attending international schools, uh, you cannot get, well, you cannot neglect a uh, part of yourself sometimes. So my next painting is titled You're Just There. Um, it is oil on canvas and I also use palette knife for this. Um, this painting is a portrayal of my emotion growing up as an only child in the Batakni's household. Um, compared to my other cousins where they have a lot of siblings, I do feel kind of like isolated. And when I'm painting this um, artwork, um, I was able to freely express my emotion by using the palette knife and that's why it was um, going with this kind of abstract look to it. So my next artwork is titled Racial Imposter Syndrome where it's an oil on panel. This artwork is um, portraying the two sides of my culture identity, my Chinese and Batak side. And I often feel like I don't really fathom each culture um, in depth, um, which makes me feel like this kind of isolated feeling and also um, not knowing where you kind of belong. And yeah, this is shown here. So my next piece is a sculpture using air drying clay and here I used um, the head of a lark, the, bird, the bird's head and it's kind of morphing with the human body trying to create this idea of the identity that I portray and also the emotions that I feel. The head is, a lark is usually uh, associated with cheerfulness and happiness and that's how I usually portray myself when I'm around people. But in here, we notice that there is a chest around, a, a hole in the chest. And that's kind of showing the side to myself where, uh, although when I'm back alone, I do feel like this sense of loneliness and that is symbolized through the hole in the chest. So the next piece is a mixed media. I use pen, newspaper, and acrylic. Um, I drew the traditional Batak house called Uma Bolon and I also incorporated the vendor newspaper in the background to symbolize this cultural mix in my life. So my final piece is a printmaking um, titled The Origin of Lake Toba. So I illustrated this legend in hopes that I will be able to visit Lake Toba someday and learn more about Batak culture. And it's stories that has been taught for generations and I also find that this um, story or legend was quite interesting to um, knowing more about my culture. Um, that's why I do. This body of work is a story about the world of children. Although it is based on my childhood moments and memories, the artwork selected should give a sense of familiarity as the viewers may reminisce about the moments told in each piece themselves. My initial concepts about the artworks are mainly to show how grateful I am to have a such a wonderful childhood and how this has influenced me to become who I am now. As I grew up, I often miss those days when I had such a wild and free imagination regarding the things or people surrounding me. Hence, some of the artworks displayed may consist of surrealist approaches. In making the artworks, I am inspired to explore different mediums and techniques throughout the pieces. The painting pieces are mostly done using acrylic paint, however, each does display different approaches that I used, such as mixing brush strokes with palette knives and modeling paste to give three-dimensional effects. Most of these various techniques are intended to relay specific messages and ideas or add visual appeal to the viewers. For the color palette, I mostly applied warm tones to give a sense of warmth to the audience, and positivity in more colorful artworks, also to remind the audience to always look on the bright side even from the less pleasant experiences. In addition to acrylic paint, I have also explored three-dimensional mediums, sleeping antidote, done with clay and flying free, made with wire, photorealistic pencil illustrations, and animation to enrich the diversity of artworks in this exhibition. To emphasize cohesiveness to my artworks, I arranged the pieces in resemblance to a diamond, starting with a smaller art piece, continuing with the largest in the middle, then tapers back down. 
Overall, the pieces arrangement is also divided into two themes. On the west side are children's experiences inside their safe spaces, while the east side is when they are started to be exposed to the outside world as they become more independent. The centerpiece of my exhibition is my painting tall. The artwork is placed in the middle as one of the pieces that relate to me the most and carry the idea of insecurities children may experience as they grow up and are exposed to the outside world. Furthermore, I also made the arrangement relatively symmetrical based on the medium, the sizes, and the colors of the artwork to further balance the overall visual weight. The color palette that starts with a grayscale mood and escalates to warm tones towards the middle and back to grayscale is also part of the arrangement to further indicate that although the past is already behind us, it is the colorful experiences that made it memorable. Throughout the next pieces, it can also be realized that there is always this small girl that mostly wears a red dress as the main character on every artwork displayed. I deliberately made her wear red to represent me and to make her look bold and full of courage. This character also becomes the connector of every artwork I create. Despite this, I would like to keep on exhibiting my pencil illustration, My Childhood Guardians, as the only artwork that does not have this characteristic. The drawing's message is based on my past, a girl who is quite timid but is smiling after she imagines that she is protected by spirit animals. Through this illustration, I am showing that my shyness has been the stumbling block that hinders me from discovering my true self, thus it is grey instead of red. Since the artwork carries the initial idea of me trying to discover myself, I will begin the exhibition with this artwork. Reaching the last panel of my exhibition, viewers will be able to see the contrast of the last painting with the first one. The final piece, A Happy Childhood, displays the girl wearing a colored red dress instead of grayscale. Ending with the term happy, I hope that as viewers see the various experiences I underwent as a child, they can realize that childhood experiences should be valued more. My name is Hannah Patricia Halim and I take IBDP VAHL. Enjoy my exhibition! Today I'm going to present my exhibition. So yeah, let's just get started. So this is my first uh, painting. So it is entitled Ella Cardini. It's acrylic on canvas. And it actually talks about, it is dedicated to Radin Ajan Cardini herself. This is like the Japanese writing of her name there on the blackboard. And then uh, it's actually about my appreciation for her for being one of the most formidable Indonesian female warriors who fought for girls' education in Indonesia. So due to her efforts, like both boys and girls here can now study uh, and, and attend school. Yeah. So the interesting part here is like my uh, this is like my first time to do a realistic painting of her portrait, and it's actually very hard to. Uh, find her own portrait so I just have to like adjust it for a couple of times and yeah that's the final result okay moving on to the next uh, painting so here is my appropriation art of Ben and Mutaya's eternal hope it, that is made in 2013 so it's a mixed media on canvas and it actually talks about my hope for a better society that actually uh, just like the reduction of racial injustices so yeah, I transformed uh, the face of the original to like an Asian face and then I also added this rose in which red means like luck in Chinese culture. And the most interesting part here is that I used newspaper here and I just painted over it to make just like the mixed media and also added more value to the whole composition. Yeah, moving on. So this is my third uh, piece, which is a drawing that is graphite on paper. It is entitled Childhood Guardians. So it actually talks about my past. And when I was very young, I was known to be like more introverted uh, than my siblings. So yeah, when, whenever like I experience lack of courage, like I just imagine myself with spirit animals. So like this like bear, owl, and also like wolf that like represents courage so it just gives me the bravery and yeah it's actually grayscale so it's a photorealistic illustration and it's almost like 50 hours like it took almost 50 hours to make it yeah next <laughs> so uh here's my fourth piece so my fourth piece is called sleeping antidote so it actually talks about my comfort object so 
I believe that everyone have like their own comfort object. So for me, it's like my own doll. It's like a rabbit doll. And that's why I make it a doll. And it's actually the size of the doll. And yeah, so it's actually made out of modeling clay. And this piece, so to share this feeling with the audience, like I just want to give like how the comfort toy has given me a sense of comfortable and a sense of warmth and safety every time and everywhere. So yeah, to share this feeling to the audience more, I made the blanket with a patched pattern and unusual colors just to make it like uncomfortable feeling, but it's actually me sleeping there comfortably. Yes, okay. My fifth painting here is uh, bedtime storytelling. So it is acrylic on paper and I just frame it like this double a canvas so it's A3 size and yeah I believe that everyone have experienced like their parents giving bedtime stories so yeah it's actually based on bedtime stories and it's about me like just telling stories to my dolls but just to make it more imaginative or surrealistic I just uh, make them like have this, these expressions and just exaggerate their own emotions and I also added some texture like 3D textures here by using like unusual strokes for the overall composition. Moving on, this is my main piece and it, actually, and it is entitled Tall. So it is acrylic on canvas and it is actually as tall as me. So yeah, it actually talks about my one of my insecurities during while well, growing up like from child into like a teenager. So one of my insecurities for me is like regarding my height. So in this painting I symbolize the uh, people that is like taller as giraffes and like me just like looking up to them. So I actually like admire those people. And yeah, that's like the meaning behind this. So this is acrylic. And I just mixed it with modeling paste to make like textures and yeah, make 3D textures to make it like more alive. And I also add some warm tones because this memory is actually what makes me. So I just make it more warm instead of like cold, like because cold like just make your past look so dark. But I actually am grateful for this experience and that is why I made it more warm. And also, yeah, uh, for this exhibition, I added this like additional installation just to make it more alive to the audience and by using like real grass and this fake, uh, fake, yeah, fake grass that I collected in front of my house. So this is my seventh piece. So it's actually called Into the Unknown. So it is an acrylic on paper too. And from being a little girl until this present moment, I have always like loved imagining my surroundings and also uh, about the real world that does not actually exist in this real world. So like in this painting, my elements are very surrealistic here. Like you can see there's koala wearing a chef hat and also koi fish like flying around the balloon. So yeah, it's actually about my imaginative own world and I love rabbit so yeah that's why the hot air balloon is like rabbit yeah next <laughs> this is like my second sculpture so it's actually my first time doing wire sculpture here also it is made out of copper wire and it is inspired by the idea that eventually children will have to grow up and become more independent or responsible for their own lives so when the time comes, like they will have to leave their safe space, which is like this nest that is represented here, which just kind of looks comfy. So uh, yeah, it's actually about her like taking her own journey, like the red girl again, and like uh, uh, the journey that may be a bit arduous or maybe difficult, but it is essential to keep like, uh, for us to keep like hope or trust in the process. Okay, so uh, almost the last painting here. This is uh, titled Happy Childhood, so it is also acrylic on canvas and it is actually a self-portrait of me. So it is uh, from my childhood portraits that my parents took and it actually uh, talks about my wonderful childhood of mine. So you can see like looking back at the uh, first drawing of the exhibition which is like grayscale here, you can see like uh, the girl has now wears a red outfit so it actually uh, represents that her being like 
having fun, her own courage, her own self, and just like discovering her true self. Yeah, so it's actually about the experiences in, uh, throughout my childhood that makes me as me. Okay, so the last uh, artwork that I exhibited here is my short animation that I made. So it's a digital animation and you can just like scan this and yeah, you can just watch it. And it's actually entitled uh, You Matter. So You Matter here, uh, it is based on a quote that every child is a unique flower and together they will create a beautiful garden. So, uh, like, we cannot forget this, like, childhood memories and we, uh, every child has, like, their own light. So, they just need to find that light. So, yeah, that's all from my exhibition. So, I hope you like it and enjoy it. Thank you. My body of work reflects me and my surroundings, more specifically on the relationships around me. I decided to touch upon the theme of human relationships as I believe that it is crucial to interact and connect with others, building on trust and love. I used my artworks as a form of self-reflection and a means of catharsis, touching upon topics that are extra personal and were never talked about. With the concept of human relationships, I approached the creation process as a chance for self-reflection with the main goal of expressing myself in a way I've never done before. Having struggled to voice my thoughts and emotions in words, I let these thoughts materialize into my artworks. I wanted to use my canvas as a lens for others to see through my own perspective, living the moments of my life, feeling the emotions I felt. To personalize each and every piece, I recalled various human relationships, experimenting with diverse mediums ranging from watercolor, acrylic, oil, sculpture and animation. I touch upon my relationships with my friends, family, community, and myself. Interconnecting my material with message, I used hanji paper to represent my Korean culture. I wanted to show my intentions directly through this medium. Although there were repetitions within the mediums I used, such as acrylic paint, the brush strokes differed. Utilizing larger brushes, I created rough textures and expressed myself freely. I also used smaller brushes, focusing on the tiniest details and fine lines to bring my paintings to life. My techniques also voiced my ideas, where pointillism portrayed my patience and self-containment, and the scribbling technique displayed the unstable mind. Colors and symbolism also played a role in expressing my ideas. Red portrayed anger and frustration, while blue portrayed sorrow and sadness. Various symbols were incorporated to display subtle meanings, personalizing the purpose behind my artworks. Representing my family members as animals, I symbolized how I viewed them reflecting upon our relationships. By creating three-dimensional artworks and animations such as my installation, Time Heals, my paper cut, family portrait, and animation society, I diversified my artworks, visually stimulating the audiences in a contrasting medium. By applying these approaches, I mirrored my thoughts, emotions, and experiences through my artworks, capturing my ideas and purpose. I aspire to portray a cohesive journey of human relationships that I have stumbled up upon. Arranging my first artwork as a self-portrait, I wanted to reveal my thinking process and how I influence my own relationships with others. 
I thought that this would give the viewers a better understanding, allowing them to view my following paintings from my perspective. The subsequent artworks displayed the relationship between me and my society. I touched upon relationships between peers, the Indonesian community that welcomed me in open arms, and the act of manipulation in society. I reflected on how I've learned to adapt and embrace the change within my surroundings, establishing vital bonds with my community. As these topics were broader, I wanted the viewers to relate and connect. I delved deeper into more personal topics, my childhood, my relationship with my family, and my mother. My intention was to challenge the readers to reflect upon their personal relationships and appreciate those in their lives. By arranging my artworks from monochrome to, and slowly incorporating color, I wanted my final piece to be the most colorful, symbolizing how, with effort and time, things will get better in life. Throughout my body of work, the usage of gold symbolizes various things. The gold in my artworks represented positivity. It represents my way of releasing emotions, jong, my love for my family, and my mother. It also mended my childhood scars and created a whimsical dreamy effect for my final piece. Present in all of my artworks, I utilized the gold to create cohesiveness, illustrating what I value. The two final pieces, Nobody Knows and A Dream to Dream, is a self-reflection, portraying myself throughout the process of struggling with my own relationships. At the same time, I wanted my paintings to be reassuring to the viewers if they are also struggling with their own relationships. With the last painting, A Dream to Dream, I aim to give the re viewers hope that everything will be all right. Hello everyone, so today I'll be walking you through my exhibition which revolves around the concept of human relationship and during this exhibition I reflect upon myself, my reflection of, uh, with myself as well as my surroundings, my communities such as like my friends and families. So the first artwork is a self-portrait of myself and I mainly focused on how my sensitivity kind of um, affects my relationship with other people. So this artwork is done with ink on paper using the um, technique of pointillism. And the heart placed on the head um, symbolizes my sensitive nature and how I tend to overthink and kind of think more with my heart than my brain. So it, it causes me to be overly emotional compared to logical. And then the golden tears represent how I release my emotions through my tears as it helps me to feel relaxed and calm. So the next artwork, it's called Kitsune, which is this fox mask here. And this is um, done by printmaking. And this artwork um, touches upon the societal relationship of how people kind of use this mask as a way of um, shape-shifting because this god has this um fox god has the ability to shape-shift and in a way it helps people to adapt into their new environments um blending into their peers and so on so the next artwork is another self-portrait reflecting on my relationship with my indonesian community so moving from South Korea to Indonesia at a young age, I faced a lot of um, language barriers and cultural barriers. But the Indonesian fam community, which are um, symbolized by these tropical flowers and the Rafflesia flower, um, they kind of uh, welcomed me with open arms and embraced me into their community. And that is represented by the leaf entering the um, Korean traditional paper called Hanji paper. And um, I used to like hate the change of a different environment, but because they were so welcoming, I was able to start liking the change and um, develop a mutual respect of the different cultures. So the next artwork, it also touches on the relationship with society. It's called the marionette and it revolves around the topic of manipulation which is an act that is usually seen to be very negative in society. However, in this case, I use the I use gold on the strings to represent 
um, this Korean word called jong, which is basically the affection um, relationship, like whatever connection you have with um, another person. So by using um, the technique of pen on paper, I scribble across the paper showing how being manipulated kind of affects your mentality be to become very unorganized and messy. So the next artwork is called Pine Heels. And this artwork um, reflects on my childhood and the childhood scars that I faced, which are represented by the cracks on the sculpture and as well as the pool. So this installation piece consisting of the sculpture and a mirror with the digital drawing. Um, the mirror basically shows the girl after she's grown older and um, all of her scars and wounds are gone and the black hole that was in the sculpture previously is mended with gold. This, and as the girl grows up, this is a representation that, uh, that time really helps one, one to heal. So the next piece is my animation titled The Society and this is where I reflect on the societal standards and how they kind of cause one's emotions to build up such as like when people stare at you kind of talk behind your back and by um, drawing this animation it showed like the process of one's mind as they uh, thrive in society. Um, and to create this animation, I used the program called Procreate and I drew like different layers and kind of compiled them together into one clip. So the next artwork is a reflection of my relationship with each of my family members. So I drew a f um, family portrait to represent it and I represented each of my family members with an animal that I thought represents and symbolizes them accurately. So my, for example, my father is represented as the tiger because he's the leader of the family and uh, he's like my mentor and a pillar to lean on. My mother is represented as the red panda because the red panda symbolizes compassion and caring, which I thought that reflected my mother. And my brother is represented as the sea otter, which are usually seem to be playful and easygoing. And I thought that it was a perfect um, representation of my brother. So the family portrait itself is done by watercolor on paper. And I stacked layers of paint, which layers of paper that are painted with different shades of green to create a forest-like environment. So the next artwork is called Oma, which means mother in Korean. And it is an appropriation artwork of the kiss by Gustav Klimt. So this artwork basically shows my appreciation to my mother who has been working really hard for me. And I used um, the kiss by Gustav Klimt because it is her favorite artwork. And I thought that it would be nice to show my appreciation of her through one of her favorite artworks. Um, the next artwork it is done um, by oil on canvas and this is a really personal piece to me. So this artwork kind of touches on how I tend to like blame myself for the mistakes in my human relationships. And then I used colors to portray my emotion where the red portrays anger and frustrations upon frustration upon myself. And the blue represents sorrow and sadness. And as I kind of feed these negative thoughts into myself, there's like the nose bleed and the wounds that kind of shows the damage on my mentality. And again, I use the golden tears to show how I release my own emotions to calm myself down. The last artwork in my exhibition is called A Dream to Dream. So after all the troubles with my human relationships and kind of um, struggling with it, I have like this dream for everything to get better and to kind of be better at in, um, the interactions between me and my community. And then um, 
So I decided to paint this painting because it's first of all it's really dreamlike and the whales symbolize um, hope and good luck. And so I named this dream to dream because I dream for my dream for everything to get better. And I thought that the dreamlike painting represented it well. Um, so this is my personal response of my comparative study, which um, where I studied upon The Lovers by Renan Mag Magritte, as well as The Kiss by Gustav Klimt. So um, using different colors and composition, I um, use, I painted about the concept of unrequited love, which is a one-sided love. And this concept is um, different from the original concept of the, the lovers and the kiss, which kind of revolves around the theme of love. But by using the same um, formal qualities such as colors and patterns, I um, touched upon a different um, side of love. And this is shown by how the woman leans onto the man to show her need for his love and affection. But then the man um, turns his back on the woman as well as the cloth on his head kind of shows his unwillingness to show back the love to the woman. Um, at the same time, I use the different, the complementary colors of blue and yellow to show the difference in their affections towards each other. So thank you for viewing my exhibition. Um, I hope that you liked each and every of my pieces because I thought that they are very personal to me and they kind of reflect me for who I am. And I hope that I was able to get my message through all of my pieces by using colors, textures, brush strokes, and so on. Thank you. By presenting the topic of dreams in my artworks, I'm portraying the most significant and personal parts of my mind. Being an introvert, I prefer not to speak up about my thoughts, and those thoughts are often left abandoned in my subconscious. The aim of the body of work is to express my emotions and thoughts that occur during my dreams, while also showcasing my identity as a Balinese female student. My first artwork titled Fortress is inspired by Balinese folklore which tells the tale of Rita, an evil dragon which kept all the water to himself until Lord Indra slayed him and returned the water to earth. This dragon represents bad traits while the knight represents good traits in the mind. The man in the mirror needs to let go of his thoughts or else his bad traits might impact his life. The artwork is placed first in the exhibition to give the audience an introduction to the chimerical themes present in the other artworks. The black and white color scheme against the colorful reflection is used to represent the bleakness of dreaming and pretending compared to reality. The purpose of this artwork is to spread a message to the audience to avoid getting lost in our dreams, as our worst traits can overcome our best. The next artwork in the exhibition is titled Shipwreck. This artwork represents my emotions while traveling to my hometown Bali from Jakarta through a ferry. The lack of negative space represents my convoluted thoughts while adapting to life in two different places. Despite the fact that my physical body has a responsibility to move between Bali and Jakarta often, the use of wings in the artwork symbolizes freedom when I am dreaming. I am allowed to express myself freely in my subconscious without being restricted to societal expectations. The artwork titled Gold Armor is an expression from my experience during the Potong Gigi ceremony. During the ceremony, my skin tone, waistline, outfit, and facial features were changed to match the beauty standards and my social caste in Bali as Xatria. This made me feel like a completely new person, as if I was reincarnated. The purpose of the ceremony is to prevent people from reincarnating as animals. Coincidentally, the day before the ceremony, my pet fish died, which led me to imagine that they might have reincarnated and I will see them again in my next life. Hence, the artwork is a visualization of what I imagine reincarnation might feel like. The clay sculpture titled Blood for the Blood God is based on my experience watching pigs uh, get slaughtered in Bali as a sacrifice for religious events. However, by the end of the ceremony, the pork was not eaten and was thrown away. 
I wondered where people drew the line for animals to use as sacrifice, since common pets such as cats and dogs were treated more highly than pigs and cows, which provide food and money for people. One of my dreams is to have people kill animals responsibly, which is what I try to express in this artwork. I find that the animation titled The End is my strongest work in the exhibition because of its relevance to the theme. I placed it last in the exhibition because it connects the other artworks in the exhibition into a fast-paced story to allow the audience to experience my dreams vicariously, with a sense of deja vu after seeing the glimpse of other artworks in the video. This artwork expresses my struggle of separating dreams from reality using expressions and contrast between cool and warm colors. Therefore. The purpose of this exhibition is to tell the story of who I am through my dreams and thoughts as a Balinese teen who just returned to her hometown after living in Jakarta. I included similar themes of flowers, nature, and rocks around some artworks to show the audience that they all take place in the same world, my mind, that want to reflect my nature-loving and feminine personality into the way the artworks were presented. Hello everyone, welcome to my exhibition. My name is Lydia, and I'm going to present you the theme of dreams in this art exhibition. Let's start with my first artwork. It is titled Blood for the Blood God. It is a clay, a sculpture made from air dry clay. It is 18 times 8 centimeters in size, and I used spray paint to color the pig gold, and I used acrylic paint to color the cat orange. I added some details in the cat using a small detail brush to create the eyes and stripes. To create the texture, I used a small stick and created short lines to resemble fur. For the pig, I started out by creating simple shapes such as cylinders and circles using the clay. Then I used my sculpting tools to create the details such as the back, the nose, the eyes, and the ears. This piece um, symbolizes my opinions on religious offerings in Bali because they often use pigs or animals as the center of the offerings given, especially during religious events. Let's move on to the next artwork. This artwork is titled The Village. It is an acrylic painting which is 40 times 30 centimeters in size. In this painting, I wanted to depict a peaceful Balinese life, especially in the village. I also wanted a section of the painting to be pixelized or pixelated. To do this, I sketched equal size squares using a ruler and a pencil. Then I painted it in with acrylic paint. I also used a dry brush to create the illusion of a gradient, especially in the smoke and in the carpet. This artwork symbolizes um, religious offerings similar to the other artwork um, that was previously shown. Moving on, this next artwork is also acrylic on canvas. It is titled The Undead. This artwork depicts my emotions and my experience during prom night. It was my first night on a party or a real event that wasn't tied to any religious importance, especially with my school friends. It is 40 times 30 centimeters in size, and I used a similar technique to the previous artwork, except I didn't pixelate any of the features in the painting. I used cool tones on two thirds of the painting so that the red of the blood and the dress could be highlighted. In this experience, I remembered a big part of my personality um, changing. I used to be so timid and insecure, but after that night, I talked to lots of people and learned more about their experiences and decisions. And since then, I feel like I've grown and changed as a person. In this artwork, I was also inspired by the mythical creature zombies which are half-dead, half-alive creatures. Moving on, um, this artwork is titled The Limit. It is an appropriation art um, from an artwork titled Winged Figure. It is 60 times 40 centimeters in size, 
and it uses acrylic paint on canvas as well. I decided to make this painting soft to resemble the femininity of the character I tried to paint in this painting. I also added some elements of Southeast Asian and Balinese features, such as tan skin, curly hair, um, flowers, and accessories in the hairpiece. The wings in this artwork symbolizes freedom, as this woman is able to express herself um, as she is embracing her beauty, although it does not completely align to the typical beauty standards, especially in Western beauty. Moving on, I'll be talking about this artwork, which is titled Gold Armor. The energy in this artwork is really contrasting to the previous artwork because it really showcases a bold energy. This is also acrylic on canvas, but I used a completely different technique. I used a palette knife um, and lots of paint to create layers. In addition, I also used a medium, an acrylic medium, to make sure that I could get a thick texture um, on the canvas. In this painting, I was really inspired by my aquascaping hobby. The night before my potong gigi ceremony, both my fish died, and it made me really sad because I had a really strong passion for taking care of them. And the aquascape was the inspiration for the background of the piece, which resembled the rocks um, and the water that I put my fish in. To create the reflection of the lake in the painting, I dragged the palette knife down so that it reflects the similar mountain pattern on the top. I also added flowers to add balance to the piece um, as the colors were quite um, bright in the front and darker in the back. The colors I chose for the back are mostly red, yellow, and navy blue, but I also used some cerulean blue and white. And I blended everything with a palette knife to make it clear. Moving on to the installation in this exhibition, which is the butterflies you might see around the exhibition, um, I wanted to highlight the symbol of freedom, similar to the wings that we've seen before in the previous artwork. I used cardboard to carve out the butterfly, and I added a three centimeter cardboard cutout of a circle in the body of the butterfly to create depth and make the wings pop out. In some of the butterflies, I added a bit of wire to create the antenna so that it looks more similar to a real butterfly. This butterfly installation is connected to my next piece, which is titled The Shipwreck. In that artwork, it has the same butterfly wings on a person to resemble the mythical creature of a fairy. This artwork is inspired by my trips from Bali to Jakarta back and forth um, since childhood until now. It is one of my favorite experiences because I enjoy traveling a lot. In this artwork, I use printmaking and the size is 34 times 45 centimeters. I used a sponge to create the illusion of uh, mixed colors when in reality, I just use blue and uh, red paint, but as they mixed onto the linoleum print, they ended up making a lot of purple and blue uh, gradients, which I think is really suitable for this artwork. Next, I wanted to talk about my second last piece, which is titled Fortress. It is inspired by a Balinese myth or a Hindu myth, where a sea serpent or an evil creature stole all the water from earth and Lord Indra had to kill the dragon to return all the water back and save everyone. I decided to make this story more westernized by using English ruins or castles in the background. Moving on to my final piece, which is this animation I made using paint to Wasai. Um, I wanted this animation to represent um, how dreams are for me, which is really fast-paced and confusing. 
but it's all connected to my real life, my daily life, and my personality. I think this whole exhibition is really highlighting the mix of emotions and personalities I've had along with my different experiences, which is highlighted by this artwork, which focuses on my e-learning experience during this pandemic, and also relating it to some artworks that you might have seen before in this piece. Um, I started by making um, the line art and then I colored every layer. And finally, I also created the background for some of these pieces, such as the one of my room and the one of under the sea. And this highlights the mythical aspect of dream. I hope you really enjoy it. Thank you very much. My collection of art embodies my theme of human nature in which I use personal elements to represent more general concepts. My artworks are split between two interpretations of human nature. The first interpretation concerns fundamental human cycles and behaviors that define the essence of being human. My second interpretation is a crossover between humans and nature in which I represent our symbiotic relationship with the environment, animals, and this earth. Before settling on human nature, my initial theme, which was only loosely related to the entire collection of art, was metamorphosis. The intention behind this theme was to encapsulate the movement and progression of life in a way that captures an overall change. This opportunity to build my body of works allowed me to experiment with new mediums and techniques while also growing as an artist. I practiced my skills in printmaking, oil painting, sculpting, all of which I had done for the first time. Despite abandoning my old theme of metamorphosis, I chose to maintain a progression in this display of my exhibition. From left to right, you'll see that the artworks are organized in a way that represents a semi-chronological order of my experiences. My first painting from the left, entitled Drifting Off Into a Dream, symbolizes my attachment to sleep and how it affects my mental state. My second painting, Emotional Healing, shows the stages of grief which are all important responses to recover from trauma and tragedy. My third piece is a sculpture entitled Symbiosis, which was inspired by my passion for animal conservation. It approached the more literal interpretation of humans and nature. My appropriation piece, Beauty and Aging, embraces the inevitability of getting older and experiencing changes in her body by contrasting Vermeer's original girl with a pearl earring with my grandmother as an equally beautiful subject. Finally, my printmaking piece, Man and Water, shows the duality of humans and animals that reflect the complexity and harmony of both beings together. I consider each work a fundamental piece of human nature and believe that they all offer a unique approach to define the human experience, whether this is through na natural cycles or our relationships with nature itself. My name is Jacqueline Nelly Rutherford of ACS Jakarta's Ivy Visual Arts SL program. And with all this being said, I hope you enjoy my exhibition. Beginning from the left, we will view my oil painting entitled Drifting Off Into a Dream. I chose to begin my exhibition from the left with this painting because sleep represents this limbo state between consciousness and unconsciousness and the act of later on waking up felt like the appropriate way to begin my exhibition. Before I explain, I would like to provide a brief background history into my inspiration. So, with the situation of the pandemic, my family decided to move to New York City, which is exactly 12 hours behind Jakarta, where I go to school. This resulted in a prolonged jet lag experience, which was very trippy and discombobulating. Truthfully, um, because of this, I didn't get enough sleep, um, only about 30 to 5 hours every night, um, which I tried to make up for the lost time during my short naps. As most people can relate, sleeping became my way to recharge and rejuvenate. However, with this lack of sleep, I truly relished my time, my naps, sleeping on the sofa. So this figure is supposed to represent me sleeping on my sofa and how despite sleeping in quite an uncomfortable looking position, I'm able to have such a lovely dream state. The soft pastel colors represent how much I enjoyed sleep. And this is visible in the figure's clothes as well as the background. I purposely chose to incorporate elements like the swirling background and the flowers to incorporate a layer of surrealism which mirrors my dream state. The process of making this painting was actually quite interesting because I chose to use oil paint um, to accomplish this very blended and dreamy um, look. I decided to use very pure oil paint which I 
chose to spread across the entire painting very thinly. And this was able to accomplish this blended and very surreal overall effect. Moving on, my second painting entitled Emotional Healing represents the widely known stages of grief, which are denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and finally acceptance. Grief is a very common and natural response to misfortune, whether this is a tragedy, death, or heartbreak, and with this in mind, I chose to channel my own experiences with grief into my artwork. In this painting, you can see the different stages of grieving, as well as a specific and intentional use of color. Towards the top of the painting, we can see the initial stages of grief, which are more dramatic and cathartic, and to accomplish this, I utilized the impasto technique to create a disorderly base for the contrasting colors. This discordance at the top is symbolic of the emotional chaos that is felt by someone in the early stages of the grieving process. At the bottom of the painting, the colors in the background begin to blend with one another in a way that is softer, which shows how over time, with this natural reaction, a person can obtain this sense of calmness and closure. Hence, I named this painting Emotional Healing. My message that I try to convey with this painting is that although some stages of grief might not look so pretty, we must learn to embrace this process as it is necessary to grow and continue after moments of tragedy. Okay, as a bit of a reflection so far, my first two paintings have been oil-based. Um, Emotional Healing was actually my first oil painting ever, and despite its Despite the initial unfamiliarity of oil painting, it soon became my favorite medium where my practices range from impasto to underpainting. Um, this medium really allowed me to manipulate paint with leisure um, because it was afforded by its slow drying properties and um, I didn't have to rush my painting and I was able to truly use this to my advantage as I mentally mapped out my paintings. Moving on to my third piece, which is also my centerpiece, we have my sculpture entitled Symbiosis. This is my first piece from the left that dives into my second interpretation of human nature in which it is more focused on the literal relationships between humans and nature. I wanted this sculpture to show the hu human reliance on animals and how we often take them for granted. Um, so beginning with the size, realistically speaking, we would never see a turtle actually this size in comparison to a human, however, I chose to make the, hum the turtle overwhelmingly larger than the human to act as a stand-in for all animals and all of nature. Um, I chose the sea turtle because I personally feel like sea turtles have always been the poster child for eco-friendliness and um, there have always been, they have always been an animal that we need to protect from extinction. In addition to the fact that they're endangered and need to be protected, I also wanted the sea turtles to represent this earth. So, the shell of the turtle represents the greenery and the grass of the environment, while the brown scales of the turtle represent the dirt and the foundation of our planet. Uh, I believe that colors play a really huge part into this sculpture, where we can see the green for the environment and the brown for the dirt, and simply blue for the human. So, I chose to have the shell and the scales of the turtle to be very intricate, especially compared to the human, because this can show how humans can be seen as insignificant in comparison to the grand scheme of this entire earth. I tediously painted the scales of the turtle, each representing a significant factor that all unify to create what is so valuable and what we know as this earth. Finally, we can almost see like that the human is melting into the turtle's shell and how this really shows our connection with nature and how we're not simply just lying relying on them, but we're also truly connected and ingrained into um, the heart of this turtle, but more importantly, the entirety of this earth. So finally, as a reflection, sculpting really allowed me to exercise a three-dimensional understanding of my art to convey my ideas, and unlike any of my other projects, sculpting really relied on my hands to maneuver the clay according to my liking, um, which really allowed me to connect with the art that I was truly making. <laughs> Next up is my fourth artwork, which is a gouache painting of an appropriation of Johannes Vermeer's Girl with the Pearl Earring. I believe that um, a very important part and aspect of Vermeer's original painting is the youthfulness and the femininity of the girl. To add my own twist to this painting, I decided to replace the figure with a very important person in my life, my grandmother, to show an older version of this girl. 
this painting was very significant to me as I could incorporate my grandmother into this painting. And for me, my grandmother is a very beautiful and kind soul and I truly wanted to emphasize this in my painting. There is generally a stigma behind aging in that as you get older, your beauty declines. However, I chose to depict my grandmother in the exact same way as the original painting to show that there is a comparable beauty to both the original and to my appropriation that although different, both figures are uniquely beautiful as well. I chose to appropriate Vermeer's painting for a number of reasons. One, because of how iconic it is. Second of all, because of the initial youthfulness in the original painting. And finally, because the material garments of the figure and how it maintains a layer of objectivity for us to see the overall growth and age as we see the figures do. Using gouache as my medium for this painting was also a completely different experience compared to oil painting. Because for water-based paintings, you have to learn to build upon the layers very differently. It dries much quicker and it leaves behind a more faint and aged look, which is actually something I really wanted to incorporate into this painting, considering the theme of maintaining a beauty, maintaining beauty within aging. Last but not least is my printmaking art piece, which depicts a half man head and a half fish body. This is my second interpretation of human nature as a crossover. I decided to end my exhibition with this piece because it is heavily inspired by the culture w that precedes the entirety of this exhibition. This printmaking is my own representation of what would be 15th and 16th century Aztec art, which was known to include animals, people, and religious figures. Considering that I wanted to keep the essence of Aztec culture, I displayed the fish to show its side profile so that there were few dimensional aspects to the print which allows the viewer to direct its focus to the details of the fish scales. Similarly to my sculpture, Symbiosis, this painting is meant to depict a oneness with this earth and its inhabitants through literally combining a man and a fish as one being. And this concludes my exhibition on human nature. I truly thank you for your attention and listening to my presentation, and I hope you will. Thank you so much.